ponder or think what is the intent of the representative of God the spiritual master communicating with us because he wants us to be in harmony with the will of God, the happiness of serving God. That's why in scripture, Saint Prabuddha advises us the qualification of a spiritual master. He must have no material consideration. He's above the three modes. He's not touched by the three modes of material nature. And one qualification of a bona fide spiritual master is a teacher by example. He lives what he teaches. And that world, how we can enter that world and appreciate it, must be based upon wisdom. And what is that wisdom? It must be based upon understanding our true nature. Because if we can understand our true nature as transcendental, life, living force, a different energy from matter, then we can know and understand what is our best interest. Because all of us are eternal. Matter and life, the living force is eternal. Matter also is eternal, but the forms that you see here are temporary. So if one understands this absolute truth, then he can or she can make a decision that will answer all the fear in her heart, the longing for protection. Not only that, to be able to appreciate to have this human form of life. And the time factor that we are in this body. Because in the human form of life, we are different from animals. Because the animals or in the lower species of life, their only concern is eating, sleeping, mating, and fighting. We have that tendencies also. 
But we have this ability to make a choice, the intelligence to ask questions and to direct our life. But if we don't have this knowledge of our of this absolute wisdom, then we will always be confused and not be able to address the problem and hit it on the nail. In a nutshell, if we understand our true transcendental nature, our true eternal position and function, then we can immediately see how come we're fearful. Then we can check in our lives. What are the laws that govern this world? How can I be free from all this confusion and suffering? Krishna, the Supreme Person, who loves us eternally, whom we should love, be focusing our love in eternality and activities in eternality, we are now in this world doing our own will and the guidance we follow is the desire, are the desire in the mind under the influence of the three modes of material nature. So we are in a position now that it's a very, it's an adverse position, meaning we'll be losers if we don't have this understanding and wisdom. Because we're limited, we're not all powerful. If we make a choice not to be in harmony with what is our true transcendental nature, in pleasing and doing the will of God, then we'll have problems. So we should ask ourselves, who is the most important person? Who is the most important person? If you look closely, it's about me. There is this song, I, me, me, mine, even in tears, I, me, mine, even in pain, I, me, mine, even in death, I, me, mine. It's all about me, myself. But because I'm not self-sufficient, I'm not all-powerful, and I am now encumbered in this body, and a force greater than me, although I am superior, but this force is so great that it subjugates me, and I have to follow it if I am not with wisdom and not experiencing these activities that I should be doing in harmony with the will of God. It's a science we should do and perform. It's not what you want. It's our true transcendental nature to be loving and serving God. Just like a fish, it's natural for him to be swimming in the water. For the spirit soul who is life, eternal, the living force, trying to find security in this temporary dead world, it's a contradiction with our true nature. That's why the formula is wrong. But how come we continue doing it? How come it's so hard? Yeah? Because since we are all individuals, we have this tendency to play God, to do our own will for ourselves, to fulfill our happiness by ourselves. But the problem is we are not self-sufficient. Fulfillment comes from being in harmony with the source of life and matter and the Lord of love who is our eternal friend. That is the science being taught by the saintly person. So, I'll read to you here the lives of those who were in ignorance of their true identity, who were 
struggling to survive. Meaning to find fulfillment and happiness. To live a life of fulfillment. So I'll tell you the story of Mrigori, the hunter. When he was hunting, as what we have discussed previously, somebody disturbed his hunting activities because the hunting activities he does every day is based upon killing animals and that is his livelihood. But in his heart, he wants to give pain to the animals because he's thinking the animals are my enemies. And he finds happiness when somebody, when the living entity whom he have hunted are half dying. And when he met Narada Muni, who told him, you know, what you're doing will give you pain in the future. You'll be living a hard life. So that is connected with the law of karma. As you sow, you shall reap the teachings of Christianity. The law of karma means a certain activity leads to a certain reaction. So if you engage in good karma, good comes to you. If you engage in activities that will give suffering to others, then you're going to experience that, no matter how you try to run away. So meaning, you have laid down the foundation of your suffering when you're ignorant of your true eternal identity and you're not able to understand how to be in harmony with God's laws and the laws of material nature, which is under the laws of God. That's why everything animate, that's why the guidance we follow is based upon scripture. So the system we follow is based upon three foundation. Absolute foundation that we will not be lost, but it will be a stable, eternal foundation for the soul, for the living being. Because it's a connection with the Supreme Person, His will. And I'll talk first about how to be in harmony with God's laws and even what we experience here. So look at the past times you did play. King Indra. Right? Because, you know, the residents of Brindavan, they did not offer to King Indra. Because the demigods are the ones who give us boon. It's not that something comes from nothing. <laughs> that is his role. To give rain. Either in the desert, on land, on the ocean. That is his role. But because of his power, he thinks he's all powerful. He forgot his master. So when those living entities who were pleasing God, doing the will of God, who are in meditation of just simply doing the will of God, loving God, loving Krishna in Vrindavan, his pastimes, and he disturbed them, and he wants to point his authority. You know? But my point is this. There are laws that governs this body, the law of time. It's not that you work very hard. You're, you're making nighttime, daytime. How come you're still poor as a pauper or as a, as a, like a rat in the, you know, in the gutter? How come? You ask this question. Because you don't know the science of karma. You do good. And what are those good activities you can do? Activities that will help people physically. Give them alleviation. You build up hospitals. You dig well for, for water system. You plant trees. You know, you help the needy. You share what wealth you have. You care for others physically. Then when you leave this body, you have accumulated a certain amount of fuel. Good karma. But when it's, you come here, you wonder how come those people, they're so rich, you know. They don't even need to walk. Somebody will carry them on the palanquin, you know. And they're called, 
they were born with silver spoons or golden spoons in their mouth in their, in their mouth how come me i'm living you know i don't even have a spoon you know what more of a silver spoon or a gold spoon you know <laughs> why because there are laws here the laws of time the laws of karma and when we come in contact with god's compassion he teaches us the wisdom how we can be amiably in harmony with everything that is here that is pleasing to God. Karma Yoga. That's why the basis for that understanding is based upon the Upanishad, scriptures. We have scriptures, the saintly person, and the spiritual master. The Lord within the heart. Who is from the outside telling us because we cannot hear the Lord within the heart. We have been so engrossed following the dictates of the mind. The desire in the mind under the influence of the three modes of material nature that is connected with the search for happiness through the senses and trying to fulfill what we're longing for. Just like a fish out of water on the seashore trying to, the people around him or he's struggling, give me air condition, give me a new cell phone. I need a, a new girlfriend, you know. I need a new car, all of this. And he's gasping. And you can see the sign. We're not talking here about something that's not, you know, imagination. Look at all those individuals who try to focus that progress. It's about fame. It's about money. It's about associating with people who are going to die. They have everything that even... They can be covered, you know, they can, what we used to joke, yeah, even your blanket can be money sued, you know. When you sleep, you can sleep on top of that money, you know. You can be covered by money. Because money is synonymous with enjoyment, power, control. But when a person is wrongly directed, not understanding this wisdom, what will happen? He will try to use that material energy to find happiness. Dead matter. So there is a science. How we can use it? this dead matter. This body. My senses. Everything. Under God's guidance. His love. How can you go to God? You know? You people take. You forgive yourself. No way. Because God is a person. Just like now you are sitting here. You have a choice. You can sit down. Listen. Understand. Or try to figure out what I'm saying, if it's true, and it can benefit you. You have a choice. What more of God? He's a person. And He comes to us through the ambassador, the spiritual master, who represents His love, who teaches us His wisdom. And this wisdom is, you come to the point, no fear. Because everything that you see here, uh, all those individuals who are conditioned, they, although seemingly they pose as religionists or spiritualists, but their medium of trying to communicate with you is not based upon what is eternal, what you're longing for. They base that upon fear. And what is that fear all about? It's about your selfishness. If you do this, you're going to suffer this damnation. You're going to be suffering and experiencing the wrath of God. You know? That's how they project it. They pour fear in your hearts. That is not the system of the spiritual master. He teaches us this science. And he gives us the wisdom. God's will. Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita. If one offers me with love and devotion. A leaf. A flower. A little water. I'll accept it. With devotion. And what is devotion connected with? It's about your love. About your happiness. But now the problem is. Whom are we really devoted to? Our mind. Our body. Our extended pulse ego. Yeah? And how do we try to satisfy that person? It's deflected upon the body. That no matter how you. <laughs> like the fish out of water. You know, you give him a nice dress, a new girlfriend, a goldfish, whatsoever. Still, that person is not happy 
will not be fulfilled. He must go back to the water. So the medium we use is completely contradictory or not in harmony with what is eternal and what we're longing for, our love. And all of us wanted to experience shelter and offer our love. But in ignorance, we try to offer that love based upon selfishness. I like you because what I see, I like it. Yeah? So now it's deflected upon that form. You know? That's why, that's how Maya tricks you. Because you don't want to serve God. You want to manipulate God's property. You want to be the enjoyer. But there's another person there watching you who will be the buffer to kick your ass. You know? You cannot outwit God. So it, you think you're going to trick God? You're going to gamble? Before you started, before you even think about it, you're already a failure. Because the foundation or the basis for your success is based upon outwitting God, doing your own will. <laughs> so in short, to be really direct, we are all against God. And how to be with God? We must enter that word of love. Because the spiritual master comes, the ambassador of God, who loves us. He gives us this science. You know what? If you touch fire, you get burned. And we always do that, you know. Search in the wrong direction. And we always get burned. I'm burned out, you know. My husband let, let me run with some beautiful, you know, prostitute. Or my wife, you know, through his bad, to her bad association, run with a tomboy, you know. And the mind will tell you because you want to be to be happy. You ask the mind, 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 mind. Mirror, mirror. No, in, you ask the mind, how can I? How? And the mind gives you. Maybe you can try this, but it's not. There's no period. Question mark. And then you do it. How? Oh, failure. The mind will tell, do it again. But there's comma. Then again, question mark. There's no period. So let's put a stop to the suffering we're experiencing. That is the reason, seemingly, the teachings of Lord Jesus Christ is not understood clearly when He tells us, love the Father with thy whole heart, thy whole mind, thy whole being. It means harmony that is eternal, even at the death of this body. So look at the life of Mrigari. Back to the point of the consciousness he was having during the time prior to meeting Narada Muni. He's always thinking about this survival, economic development, you know. And when, Lord, when Narada Muni tells him about his situation, his precarious situation, what will he face? The law of karma. Because he loves Mrigari. He does not want him to experience pain. The spiritual master, you know, he loves us so much that if you have someone who is the representative of God, associating with him, following him, you make progress. Why? Because he takes all your sinful activities. But this is misinterpreted by so-called religionists. They see the representative of God as a doormat. And they put forward this horrible, bizarre teaching. You can go and sin and bathe in the blood of the sacrificed son who was murdered by the demons. And they put some, let us bathe in the blood of Jesus, you know. True is a saying that a dog returns to his vomit. So, the science we're teaching is based upon the will of God, harmony. 
So we don't threaten you. It's just, we're telling you, if you touch fire, you'll get burned. So you should think about it. And how do you get burned? You put your heart, your love upon these temporary forms. You try to play this world because of material conditioning. And what is that material conditioning? You're not seeing everybody as a child of God. You're thinking, my father, my mother. Not understanding the laws of material nature. Have you seen during rain, rainy season, there's this water coming from the mountain? Twigs comes together. You know, they come together. And when they fall down upon that water poles, you know, all the twigs will be separated. Where is your grandfather? Where are your relatives? They're all gone. My mom, her mom, my brother, I'm alone now. But I have new friends. Nichali Latasi, Gor Haridas. Sooner or later, I know we will be separated. But in illusion, you're thinking, I belong to this family. I'm this body. You know, why? It's based upon lordship. A misdirection in ignorance of the goal of life. So our progress now is based upon just trying to have a foundation for our eternality in this body. But the, the vehicle we're using is going to break down. It's going to break down. And we put it aside. We have become like the rabbit in the face of danger. What do the rabbit do? What will the rabbit do? The wolf is there. Ah, what will the rabbit do? Close eyes. Imagine, there's no problem. Yeah? What will the ostrich do? Bury her head in the burrow. No problem. Huh? Let's be real, you know. We're not here to have followers. We want you to understand this truth. And this truth can be the foundation for your happiness. You can also be guided by someone who loves you eternally. And the spiritual master is a confidential loving servant of God. And if you have a friend who is very dear to Krishna, then you become very dear to Krishna. You know, all of you here, that's why we don't put forward this Krishna came here out of His love for us, the holy names, because He knows our predicament. We are not all powerful. We cannot hack it out because we are blind. We are encumbered by this body. You know, when you leave this body, you forget everything. You think you are a good speaker, you know, oh, I can speak English, you know, it doesn't, my nose doesn't bleed, you know, you know. Then you are born in China. Because you have your attachment to this Chinese girl, you know. Then you're in Yunnan, you know. You don't know how to speak. You come out of the womb. You don't have even teeth. You can even walk. You know. Then you have to learn Mandarin. Or you're born in Poland. Where the words are, you know. It's hard to even read it, you know. To even to... <laughs> so... Look the reality. Don't be blinded by the mind. Because the mind, the reason you have this mind, because we want to play God. God gives us this field of activity. And what will disturb you? With your ignorance. What will disturb you in trying to... I'll give you one example. Huh? For example, a rapist. What do the rapists do prior to raping? Diba? He watch porno, triple X, six X, you know. He talks about this world. You know, his anger, his frustration. His goal is to experience this flickering enjoyment. The release of the semen 
the anger in his heart, but it becomes a situation where his meditation is simply this form under the influence of the mode of passion. Huh? So he's like in a straight jacket, you know, meditating. You know, a person in a straight jacket, you cannot even sit down here for a minute for sitting down and listen to my talking for an hour, you know, your mind will drip, will be drifting away. But if you know that yes, it will give me connection with what I'm looking for, you're gonna sit down. Just like Maharaj Pariksit, who's able to sit down seven nights and seven, seven nights and seven days, simply without eating and anything, not touched by this world, because he's connected with what he should be connected with his longing, his shelter, his eternal relationship with God, and it is enhanced by hearing the eternal transcendental pastimes of God that is non different from chanting the holy names. Because the holy names of Krishna, everything is contained there. The spiritual master is there. Everything, everything spiritual or material. So now back to the point I'm talking. So the rapist, his meditation, his contemplation, you know. So when he, when the person under the influence of the mind, you know, and he, he tries to release his anger by eating or exploiting, you know. What's the happiness of putting your genitals inside the ovary? There's no real happiness there. But because the person is in a straight jacket, he wants to feel relieved because of his meditation. He's so angry and that is expressed through the genitals. But if, before he does that, his meditation, you open that. Look what you're trying to enjoy. The shit in the stomach, you know, the blood. You take up that form, you're trying to, oh, you know? And even though you try that, it is not you who is really enjoying. The body, as a vehicle, you try to suck in. <laughs> it's not you. Understand? You'll never be happy. And even the release that is expressed your release for happiness. It's simply the release of pressure and frustration because of your anger. And it's now released through the senses. Anger doesn't mean I'm just going to curse you. Anger is expressed <coughs> when a person contemplates through sense perception. He contemplates sense perception because he's thinking he's the body. He's not really, he knows he's the body. <laughs> In illusion, he, he contemplates. When he contemplates, he tries to run after it. He gets it. And what happened? He's frustrated. And when he's frustrated because it does not satisfy what he's longing for, he gets angry. And he loses his intelligence. Because he's looking in the wrong direction. He's not seeing the self, you. So the science we follow is about freedom from stress. Who's the most stressful person? The person who is under the dictates of the senses and directed by the mind. Always. Why? You are always experience anticipation. Anticipation. I hope I can get that. I hope I can get that. But there's so many problems, you know. I'm trying to get this young girl, you know. But there's so many suitors better than me. What if I don't get her? So what will I do? Always problem, problem. And you try to do things to get that. When you get it, get that person. Wow, look at the beauty queen I got. But everybody's ogling at her. Why, what are you looking? Staring at my property? Like this furniture I have? And then when you, that person leaves you because you're not God. And she's also not God, self-sufficient. And you try to satisfy her and she's never satisfied. Because you cannot fulfill what she's longing for. Then she leaves you. 
then you suffer again the pain of being separated from your shelter and protection. That is the world we experience every day. Either cell phone, ball pen, caldero bayan, whatsoever, you know, a new shirt, whatsoever, a new hairdo, you know. You're always thinking about your teeth, you know, then you have meet an accident, all your teeth are broken, you know. What will you do? Buy a new set of teeth, a false teeth, you know, just to be accepted. Instead of using your teeth to bite the food you eat, it has become, you know, your medium of security, you know, or happiness. So this wisdom we must understand. So those individuals who are not in harmony with this wisdom will use a different system to help us. And it's based upon their material consideration. When Rigari was told by Narada Muni, how can I become free? How can I not experience this happening? He said, first, break your bow. What? I'm going to break my bow? This is the way I earn my living. Break it, you know. Don't worry. Don't worry. But because the influence of Narada Muni touched his heart. He took shelter of his instruction. He taught him how to meditate and chant the glories of God. He chanted the Maha Mantra, the holy names. And his life is sustained. Because if we may put forward this nonsense theory that material first because before spiritual life, then you'll never succeed. Spiritual life, you the person connected with the source of the supreme person, the sustainer, then everything is taken care of. That's why when you come in contact with the representative of God, he teaches us how, how we can be in harmony with God. That even though this body, which has been the, what has led us to the mansion, to suffering, all of this experience, this suffering, I cannot, I can now use this body to serve and love God, to be in harmony with what is transcendental, God's love. So what happened to Migari, he followed the instruction of Narada Muni, it's based upon Narada Muni's love for him, and it sustained him, that he now had a change of heart, that when Narada Muni and Kashyapa Muni went to visit him, He's a completely different, in a coherent, different state. He experienced now kindness, care, love, because he came in contact with someone who loves him. He's under the care of God. So now, whom will you be taking shelter? Your mind? And we must become free from this illusion thinking we're self-sufficient. And if you want to live alone, by you alone, then you'll be living a life that is very cold because this world is a cold world. It's an empty world. It's a lonely world. And when your foundation for happiness is based upon these temporary moving forms, your search for happiness will be doom and a failure. You understand? Is it clear to you? It is a science you must understand. Tomorrow we'll discuss and conclude what we have discussed here. But I'm just giving you this example. We have still five minutes. I'll tell you something about the pastimes of Lord Krishna. How the devotee who simply focus upon his spiritual relationship with God is always protected. There was a time during the battle of Kurukshetra that the five Pandavas, Arjuna, his brother, King Yudhisthira, and Draupadi were in the assembly of great warriors. But Yudhisthira, the elder brother of, who should, who should be the emperor, the elder brother of Arjuna, lost in his bed. So his wife is there. And the enemies are there. 
because they envy the envy the Pai Pandava so much. What they have, the kingdom and everything, especially the beautiful Draupadi. So what they did, this person, Duryodhana and Susana came to unravel her clothes because she's so beautiful and they're so lusty and they want to degrade her and also to show their dominion, their power and you know and gloat how powerful they are in anger of their envy, you know, manifested upon Draupadi and the Pai Pandavas. So what Dusasana did and they tried to pull her clothes, you know, sari, pull her clothes. So she will be naked in front of all the generals and the warriors there. But the more they pull, they're so tired, their hands are so tired. The whole place is covered with long, long fabric of clothes. They cannot unravel the clothing that is covering the body of Draupadi until they felt so tired. Krishna protected Draupadi. In the midst of adversity, she's, a pra she's in the body of a woman, very fragile, she cannot protect herself. But because she's completely surrendered in loving devotion, to the devotees of God, to Lord Krishna, Krishna protects him. Like Prahlad Maharaj, who can be more stressful? <laughs> you know, somebody wants to kill you, your father whom should be protecting, protecting you, wants to kill you, put you in pain, that is really far out, you know, beyond your comprehension. And continually they try to put him in pain. But Prahlad, a young boy, very fragile, simply chants, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, in a world that is not touched by this material world. These are not miracles. <laughs> this is God's love for him. Because he's in a world that is transcendental to this material world. That is what is being given to us. Who are all transcendental spirit soul. And now, under this world of matter. So there is hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel. There is a foundation for eternal happiness. And that should be based upon wisdom that is eternal and absolute. And it's about our true transcendental nature, our true transcendental function. And it will base upon pleasing God, to be in harmony with God. And you don't worry about what the mind will tell you. If I do this, how can I support my family? How can I please my mother? Lord Krishna is the root of everything. He owns everything. In scripture, we are guided. Everything animate or inanimate that is within this universe, within this universe, is owned and controlled by God. Animate or inanimate. Living or not living belongs to him. In Bhagavad Gita, knowing well to whom they belong, one should only use the quota that is allotted to him. So meaning, there is a point there that you have this quota. God is taking care of you already. He will, who's, you're not the ones. Do you, like you're now in this body, do you make effort to breathe? You, you ask yourself. Do you make effort? <laughs> like the one in Nano? No? Do you make bolo? No. Your body is naturally breathing because by nature, you're inside this body. It's breathing. Do you, when you eat, do you go there and bring a blender inside, digest your food? No, it's already under, it's already arranged by God. But if you know the science, and you appreciate, yes, I'm encumbered in this body. And this body is made automatically, it belongs to God. And it can be connected in transcendence with this love. And it tells me, why don't you give your life to me? Offer your life, offer everything. Don't you notice we don't ask you for anything? Because we want you to be established with this absolute truth. To be situated in the world that is transcendental. To be with God, with His love, 
Just like Draupadi, Mrigari, and the spiritual master comes. Jesus Christ comes. Muhammad comes, tells Allah, only God can protect us. There is only one God, Allah, the all-compassionate. Yes, God has unlimited qualities. He's just one person, just like you are a person. And you may ask, how is this happening? God has inconceivable potency. Because He's God. But because people don't know about that, they think God is a mystery because you cannot see Him. God has inconceivable potency and He's a person. And we can relate to Him. We can love Him. He comes here. He has many girlfriends. He has a lot of boyfriends, coward boys. And you can be situated in that world in a loving relationship. Don't worry about your spiritual form. That will be what will be your natural state and in your relationship that will be your situation. Just like this Brahmana who worship Lord Narayan and Lord Narayan saw him in devotion and picks him up in, from this world, bring him to the place of Lord Narayan, not touched by matter. So he's an associate of Lord Narayan. There are unlimited activities ongoing pastimes of God and we are invited in that pastimes. So stop these temporary pastimes of misery in this world. You know? Nobody can protect you. But with this wisdom, Krishna will protect you. Because He's the source. He's the root cause of everything, material, spiritual. So when you are with wisdom, with the science, you can use everything that you have as an offering, as a relationship with God, as a devotion. Now, what is our altar? What is our deity? This body. And Jesus Christ tells us, the enemy of the cross. What is the cross? Jesus Christ sacrificed, sacrificed to do the will of God, to come in the midst of the demons, and even to the point that they murder him. The enemy of the cross are those who set their mind on earthly things. Why? Because everything belongs to God. If our meditation is simply us and I try to control, we become thieves. That's why in the teachings of Upanishad, everything animate or inanimate belongs to God. Knowing well to whom they belong, we want to use only the quota that is allotted to you. There is already a quota for you. For all of us, all what we have to do, we must become like the child who is completely embraced by the mother. Tomorrow we'll discuss more about this because time is running out and we have to do a lot of things. So, in a nutshell, it is about us loving God. And in a nutshell, we hit the head on the nail to solve our problem. It is a disconnection of our will, our true nature that has led us to this suffering. And it made our heart very hard. And the solution is God himself, the supreme purifier. So let's chant Haribol Namaste.
I'm so 